Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to join us for our HealthLinks webinar. My name is Michelle Hahn, and I am the Community Programs and Events Manager for HealthLinks. And I really enjoy working with our partners and the rest of our team here to create webinars that provide you and your organizations with more tools and resources to help you build a culture of health, safety, and well-being for your employees. Today's webinar will focus on a very familiar topic to all of us, stress, and I'm very excited to be joined by our presenter, Dr. Kevin Laszlo, who will help us discover ways to improve our health through stress management techniques. Before I introduce Dr. Laszlo and hand the presentation over to him, I just wanted to go over a few housekeeping items. So if you haven't noticed, we're going to keep everybody on mute to limit feedback and noise during the presentation. But if you have any questions, feel free to simply type them out in the chat box in your control panel, which should have popped up on the right-hand side of your screen. And we'll answer them throughout the, the presentation if needed. And we'll also save time at the end of the presentation for final questions before everybody leaves. We will also be recording this session today to be viewable later on, and I will send out a thank you email after the webinar occurs, and you can use the link and share it with friends and colleagues who you think would benefit from listening to this discussion or listen to it again yourself. There will also be a short evaluation at the very end that will pop up right as we close the webinar, and if you don't mind taking just two minutes out of your time to give us feedback, let us know how you enjoyed the presentation and let us know what else you'd like to see as part of our webinar series. That would be great. With that, I will give a brief introduction to Dr. Laszlo and hand things over to him to get started. So Dr. Laszlo is the founder and executive director of one of the largest groups of wellness centers in the state of Colorado, Discover Health and Wellness. He developed the nonprofit organization, the Elevate Foundation, which is dedicated to the education of health and wellness across the United States. And he is not only a well-known speaker and author, but he is on a mission to inspire greatness through courage, potential, and fulfillment. And today, he is going to help us all discover how to improve our health through stress management techniques. Dr. Laszlo, I will hand it over and let you take it away. Thank you so much, Michelle. Hello, everyone. And today is not going to be a boring webinar. I can promise you that. We are going to elevate together and truly find out how to tackle that stress monkey in our lives. So if I can, if I can just take a moment, I would like to share uh, a picture of my pride and joy. Uh, this is why I do webinars. This is why I lead Discover Health and Wellness and the Elevate Foundation. Uh, so without further ado, this is my pride and joy, a little bit about myself. Oh, wait a minute, hold on, Michelle, I'm sorry. I thought I had that out of there. One second, one second, here we go. All right, this is my pride and joy. It's my beautiful wife, Jennifer, my two sons, Jay and Carson. Uh, we live in Broomfield, Colorado. I've been in Colorado for, oh boy, 41 years now. So certainly uh, before I could walk, love this state. But it's all about family. This is this is why why I get up in the morning. Okay, moving on. Discover health and wellness. We have one purpose. Our purpose is to change the way our world views healthcare. And before I dive into stress finesse, tackling that stress monkey, I do want to take a moment and talk about the current model of healthcare. And why I do this is because if we don't have our health, it is extremely stressful. This is one of the largest causes and sources of pain in our life if it's not there. So let me start off by asking you, why is your health important? Why is your health important? We all know the shotgun answers, right? But what is it for you specifically? Without your health, it affects our relationships. It affects our ability to parent our kids if you have them. It affects our career. It affects our finances. It especially affects our emotional fulfillment. Health is everything, and we don't have that. Life gets very stressful very, very quick. I want to start out by going over the current healthcare model. This is our current model of healthcare in the United States. Now, this may be shocking to some of you. I highly doubt it. However, this is uh, peer-reviewed medical journals that shows us what's happening right now in our healthcare system. 
back in 1999, the New England Journal of Medicine said our healthcare system is the most expensive and the most ineffective system in the world. We jump forward to 2007, Journal of the American Medical Association. Our country is now one of the sickest industrialized nations in the world. We are a dysfunctional mess. Jump up to 2013, National Institute of Health. We have more infant mortality, drug abuse, obesity, diabetes, heart disease, lung disease, and disabilities. Something is fundamentally wrong to lose ground against other high-income countries. What we're doing isn't working, and I want to explore that for just a moment. A couple of the shocking statistics, British Medical Journal, medical error is the third leading cause of death. National Institute of Health, 2006, conventional medicine is the leading cause of death. Now, why do I go over these stats? It's not because we should be anti-medicine. That's absolutely not what I'm saying. What I am saying is if we use drugs and pharmaceuticals as a form of health care, as our primary form of health care, we're not going to do very well. We're not going to be very healthy. That's going to lead to stress. Medicine, we are number one in the world for emergency medicine, for crisis care. And that's where we've been mixed up. This graph right here shows five X's, all right? This represents five out of six people. This demonstrates sick care versus health care. And what this stat shows is five out of six Americans will be diagnosed with heart disease or cancer. That is more than any other country in the entire world. And we have to ask ourselves, wait a minute, I think I would like to be one of the one out of the six, okay? Probably you don't want the same health condition as your grandparents do, that's my guess. And if that's true, there are some things we can do to drastically change the outcome for our future health. And we call these the five ways to elevate our health. Number one, upper left corner there, drastically reduce the amount of medication you're on through your medical doctor. Now, I've never met another doctor that would say, hey, if you're willing to change your lifestyle, let's try and wean you off these drugs, then, then I say absolutely go for it. If they're not open to that, then it might be time to take a different approach. Now, we're not saying, hey, if you're diabetic, you better stop taking your insulin. No, no, that's called early death, okay? But when the average American is on three to five medications and the average geriatric patient, patients over the age of 65, are on 11 to 14 medications, something is going on in our system where when we take medicine to cover up our symptoms, it simply leads to more problems. And like I said, I don't think this information is shocking. Most people are on track with this. Go natural first. If natural doesn't work, that's when we call them the integrative medical model for safe medication. Number two, exercise. Even a 20 minute walk three times a week is phenomenal, a brisk walk. Number three, if anybody can guess what that is with the gentleman with the boot on his head, that would be stress management. That's what we're gonna focus on today. That's kind of how it feels sometimes, doesn't it? And lastly, number four, nutrition. Now there are so many different theories on nutrition out there and I'm not gonna spend too much time going into that. However, at the Elevate Foundation, we do offer advanced talks on each of these different topics at companies. This one right here in the middle is the spine. And this is one that people don't really realize is one of the number one things you can do to elevate your health, and that is to have a properly functioning nervous system. Your nervous system is the master control center of your entire body, and there are curves in your spine that need to be lined up. Ideally, the curve in your neck should be at 43 degrees. That's from Spine Journal, very prestigious. It's kind of like your blood pressure number. If that goes straight, from poor posture, sitting at computers all day, contact sports, poor ergonomics, auto accidents, falls, all kinds of things can happen to lower our posture, bring our shoulders forward, cut off our oxygenation to our system, and slowly, it's called kyphosis, slowly it starts to mold that body into that C shape going forward that we see many 65, 75, 85 year olds walking around with today. 
So we got to have that curve back in our neck, and we can do that through postural training. So being that the nervous system is the master control center of the entire body, it controls every single other system. It controls the heart, it controls the lungs, it controls the stomach. What we're taught is if there's a symptom in the body, we're taught to take something to cover it up. You know, this happens when we're just little, little kids. By the time we're 25 years old, we've seen over 18,000 hours of pharmaceutical ads telling us, take this medication to feel better. Now, as I said earlier, a lot of it has its place, but not as a primary first approach to healthcare. Immune system. This study measured one group that had not received chiropractic care and compared their immune system to another group that had received wellness chiropractic care. They found that the group receiving wellness chiropractic care had a 200% stronger immune system than the non-chiropractic group. The oncologist took the study further and compared the chiropractic group to his cancer patients and revealed that the chiropractic group had a 400% stronger immune system than his cancer patients. It all comes down to the integrity and vitality of the nervous system. We need to make sure there's no pressure and tension because that leads to poor health and that certainly leads to more stress. And this is the summary of this little health section. It's how we think about symptoms that dictates our level of health. Let's say it's a headache, let's say it's shoulder pain. Whatever symptom you have going on in the body, we have to understand that our body is the best doctor in the world. If your body has a symptom, it's your body telling you, hey, there's a problem. Please get me fixed. Please get me looked at. Please get me corrected. I'm not asking for more Tylenol to cover me up. I need to know what's causing this problem that will eventually get worse. Get worse. We have this innate intelligence inside of our body. And this is nothing to believe in, okay? This is as real as gravity. If you trip over a curb, your knee is going to buckle. That's your body's intelligence creating a gap in that joint so it doesn't break, so it doesn't get sprained. If you touch a hot plate in the kitchen, right, you're not going to wait for the smoke to start coming up from your fingertips before you remove your hand. Your nervous system is in control of that, and it will pull your hand back quickly. Last example, when you're cold, what does your body do? It goes back to homeostasis. The, uh, the hair on your arms stands straight up to create a level of, a layer of warmth to keep your, your, your warmth into your body. Your muscles start to shake. It starts to generate heat. That's all to get your body back to 98.6 degrees. The human body is the only doctor I know of that can take a Twinkie and turn it into a cardiac cell in four hours. Your body's amazing, we need to listen. Health truly is your greatest wealth, hands down. Moving on, I'm going to jump into our specific topic today. Now that we know our premise at the Elevate Foundation and Discover Health and Wellness for good health care, and we don't want bad health because it's gonna to lead to too much stress. Now that we know that, let's jump into the Elevate Foundation. This is our nonprofit arm at Discover Health and Wellness, and we are here to inspire greatness through courage, potential, and fulfillment. We like to say, yes, Elevate. We go into companies, organizations, we do several talks, stress finesse, nutrition, exercise, toxicity, all of this free of charge, to make sure that we are making a difference in our community. As Michelle mentioned earlier, I, I'm a best-selling author. I wrote the book, Elevate, Self-Awareness Through Courage, Potential, and Fulfillment. The reason I share that is a lot of the information we're about to go over is in this book. So let's elevate together. Here's another book our doctors at Discover Health and Wellness wrote called The Patient's Guide to Life-Transforming Results, another great book that really goes over the health philosophy and how to live a long, happy, healthy life. We're supposed to live 80 to 120 years of quality, of quality, right? Sometimes we get so fixed on living longer. I don't know about you, but if I lived longer but didn't have a good quality, I wouldn't really call that a successful life. 
I want to live 80 to 120 years, as I'm sure you do, if the quality is still there. And a lot of us know 65-year-olds that are running marathons. We have 80-year-olds in our practice that literally are, are sharp, alert, vibrant, and still exercise every single day. I just got done watching a YouTube video on the world's oldest fitness competitor. I forgot her name, but she's 80 years old, and uh, her body is phenomenal. She's in such good health. So it is there, and it is for you. Okay, let's jump into stress. And what in the heck is stress? Stress is a state of mental or emotional strain, okay? No, uh, no ahas there. Now, these stats come from the American Institute of Stress and the Statistic Brain Research Institute. This just shows over the last five years how prevalent stress is. We live in the greatest country in the world, and yet we have more and more stress. It's gone up 45% over the last five years. It's gone up 60% as a basic cause of disease. It's gone up 75% as the cause of physical symptoms, and it's gone up just over 70% as the cause of psychological symptoms. Why in the heck are we so stressed? Well, we're gonna get to that in a moment. Now, this isn't uh, an average talk that's going to talk about how do we manage stress? Because quite frankly, we all know how to manage stress. Some of us pray. Some of us meditate. Some of us exercise. Some of us like massage. Some of us do a Netflix marathon and uh, don't hit stop when it says 30 seconds, your next episode will start. We all have ways to manage our stress. So let's not spend any more time on that. When you're stressed out to the point where it needs to be managed and fixed, that's kind of going against our philosophy of let's get to the source. So we're going to talk about stress finesse, not so much stress management. And here's what I mean by that. The best way to manage stress is to manage how we think about stress. Now, most of us know that it is very true. Yes, stress causes stroke. Stress causes heart disease. Yes, stress will kill you. Okay, very, very true, very real. My father died at 53 years old from, I would say, stress, but it was certainly a heart attack. But the new research shows that it's not stress that kills us. And this is very exciting. It's not stress that kills us. It's how we think about stress that kills us. For example, when we are stressed, it can be extremely beneficial. We usually get things handled. We get things done. We get this burst of cortisol, this burst of energy to push us through the resistance that we need to get through. If we use stress in that way, it's kind of like how it was designed to be used. If we were cavemen and women and we're walking through the jungle and we see this saber-toothed tiger, boom, you are stressed. Your pupils open up, your blood flow starts to get stronger, and you run and get the heck out of there, and then you wind back down to your normal levels, okay? Well, what does kill us is prolonged stress. When we live in a state of constant stress, doing nothing to take care of the source, I don't want us to be a statistic that I talked about earlier, and unfortunately, that's what happens. So let's have this be a life-changing life transforming webinar today. Now, first of all, talking about stress, what the heck is stress, right? We already talked about it being an emotional strain, but it's a catch-all phrase. For some of us, we have these automatic coping mechanisms that we label stress. As soon as we feel the resistance of stress, some of us go directly to worry. Some of us go directly to frustration. Some of us get angry. Some of us get super anxious. What is your coping mechanism that we call stress? Well, let's rewind this stress here a little bit because what stress really is, is fear. When we are stressed out, we can take these mental steps and say, hold on a second, I'm feeling a little stressed. I'm being sure with my coworkers. I'm being sure with my spouse or family. I'm not doing too good right now. Feeling a little agitated. What am I scared about right now? Where is fear showing up for me? 
Once we address that, we say, okay, well, what am I uncertain about? If I'm scared about something, what is it that I'm so uncertain about? And usually that is from a lack of preparation. Now, I understand that this is not the cycle of all stress. There are some things that we cannot control. There are some things that we are uncertain about. However, if we can take a step back and see the mental process of stress, we can say, well, I might not be totally certain about this situation right now. I am scared, I am uncertain, but I can be certain that it's going to work out the way it's supposed to. You may have heard, why is this happening for me versus to me? Excellent program to begin to, to download into your brain. When you're having stress, reverse the steps. And we're gonna go a little more into this. Now, this is a sheet that we're not gonna go through completely. However, I believe you'll, you'll have access to a copy of this if you wanna work through this more. Let's take an example. Uh, it usually starts, the cycle of thoughts starts with a stimulus, okay? Let's say, for example, you're driving into work, you're a phenomenal team member, you always get there on time, you pride yourself on being punctual. Well, guess what? Traffic is backed up. People are cutting you off left and right. Your brain is getting stimulated. As soon as that gets stimulated, as soon as that nerve impulse goes into our brain, usually it's by our senses. It's something we see, something we feel, hear, smell, taste. That is our stimulus. Well, that is going to run through our basic philosophy of life, which is going to become our thought. It's going to create meaning, and it's going to have our perception on that stimulus. That's why if you're in traffic, some people will automatically go to anger. Oh my gosh, why are all these people moving to Colorado, right? It snows a lot here. I'm so angry now. I might even roll down the window, put my hand out the window and tell the person in front of me they are number one, right? What is the thought that you have? Well, as soon as you have that thought, people in Denver are crazy drivers, that is going to lead to a certain emotion. And that emotion and that thought is probably going to be anger, okay? Well, that feeling is going to lead to an action. That action in this example was to gently roll down your window and tell the person you're number one. Well, guess what? Here come the results in my life from following that thought process. The results are the person in front of me rolls down their window and they reply back telling me, no, I'm number one. And then we go into work and we tell all of our coworkers how crazy the drivers are here and how you almost got pulled over in a fight, blah, blah, blah. It doesn't work, okay? It doesn't work for long. Here's a different process. Let's say you're driving into work, somebody cuts you off, traffic is backed up. Your thought is, okay, I didn't really like that. I'm gonna give myself that thought. However, I know if I keep that thought, it's gonna lead to certain feelings, which is gonna lead to certain actions, which is gonna lead to certain results that aren't necessarily helping me long-term in life. So how about this thought? Hmm, have I ever done anything similar to somebody else at some point in my life? The answer is usually yes, okay? That is going to be a feeling much different than anger. That's gonna be a feeling of compassion, all right? You know what, I've cut people off too. Let's just calm down a little bit, no big deal. You get to roll down the window, put your hand out the window, give them a little wave and say, hey, no worries. I know we're all works in progress. Now the result, you feel like Mother Teresa. You get to go into work and tell everybody how awesome you are and how you are in 100% charge of your emotional state. Thoughts lead to feelings. Feelings lead to actions and actions lead to results. The first thing we need to figure out is what is our automatic coping mechanism. When we're stimulated, perceive negatively, where is that emotional thought that we go to? Where is that feeling that we jump right to? We can reverse that and say, hold on, what thought just gave me that feeling? Okay, that's going to lead to different results in my life. Okay, at this point, I'd like you to raise your left hand. It's okay if people are looking at you, no big deal. 
raise your left hand as high as you can. Take your right arm and raise that off to the side like you're making a big L for leader. And you're going to bring your hand up, give yourself a high five, and say, yes, elevate. All right, go for it now. Okay, excellent. I can't see you. I can't hear you. I'm hoping you did it. Let's move forward. Now, there are basic fundamentals to stress finesse. And quite frankly, this is very, very basic. But sometimes it just takes sitting down, listening and watching to a webinar to get back to the basics. So let's start. These are the fundamentals of stress management. When people live by these fundamentals, they have less stress in their lives. Now, the stuff that I'm teaching you today, this is a lifelong process, right? If you can get this right 60% of the time, you are far ahead of most people you know. Number one, love yourself. Love, love, love yourself. You know that you're a work in progress just like all of us, whether it's me, the presenter, whether it's health links, whether it's your company, whether it's anybody you know, we are all works in progress. And that helps to get back to the process of, hey, you know what? I'm pretty awesome. I'm going to love myself today. That's step one. Going on to number two, integrity. Now, I'm not talking about moral integrity here. What I'm talking about is this question. Is what you think, do, and say consistent? Is what you think, say, and do consistent? When you have that 100% lined up, you are 100% whole, and that leads to 100% integrity. Moving on to forgiveness. I think we all know how stressful resentment is. I think Carrie Fisher said it the best. She said, resentment is like swallowing a poisonous pill and expecting the other person to die. Many of us have been taught all of our lives that when you give somebody forgiveness, you are giving it to them. Look, people are going to betray you. People are going to hurt you. We've all had the experiences, but we're not giving them the gift of forgiveness. We're giving ourselves the gift of forgiveness. When we live in a state of unforgiveness or resentment, we are literally robbing our own light not theirs. Now, I know this can be a little more complicated than that. I do go into great detail in the book if you'd like to learn further on that one. Next one is acceptance of self. This is really powerful because we all know, look, we live in a world where we're too fat, we're too skinny, our hair is thinning, our hair is too curly, our complexion is not perfect, Blah, blah, blah. It is everywhere. Everywhere we turn, we are getting messages saying you are not good enough. Look, the mere fact that you were created shows you were good enough. There's a big difference between self-worth and self-esteem. Okay, Self-worth is given. You were born. You're a miracle. Just by being born, you're an absolute miracle. Study the human body. Study physiology. You are a miracle. Self-esteem is a little different. Self-esteem is earned. And the way we earn our self-esteem is by doing what we say we're going to do, becoming the person we want to become. When you have these little wins throughout the day, throughout your life, you build up your self-esteem. And truly, I think that leads to 100% acceptance of self. This picture here is a snapshot uh, many of you have probably seen it. If you haven't, I encourage you to go check it out. It's on YouTube. And I don't know the exact uh, tag words for it, but it's something like little girl in mirror saying, I love you, something like that. But this father filmed her little girl standing in front of the mirror every morning. And her job was to get up. It's really cute. I think she's like in her 20s now. And when she started, I think she's about four or five years old. And she stands up in front of the mirror and just gives herself positive, loving, self-accepting affirmations. She's like, you're awesome. You're beautiful. You're a miracle. You're going to do awesome today. I think you look great. And it, it's adorable. But it's just an absolute reminder of getting back to acceptance of self. Next one here is to know who you are, right? 
that's one of those vague things. So what does that mean? It's kind of like finding your passion, right? It's very difficult and it's very, very large to comprehend. But what I'm referring to really in this stress talk is know what your buttons are, right? Know the type of person you are and know what things trigger your stress response. This little square down here is a study. And if you can take a minute and take a look at this square, you're gonna see blue, yellow, red, and green. And for just a moment, pick which color you are most drawn to. Okay, now that you have your color, oh, this is pretty accurate, not 100% accurate, but pretty accurate. And here we go, if you picked yellow, that means you are very analytical and loyal. If you picked red, it means you are very alert, driven, and responsive, okay? If you picked green, it means you are very, very driven. This is the, the driven sign. You want success. And if you picked blue, which my guess is the majority of you did, that means you like trucks and beer. Just kidding, just kidding. If you picked blue, that means you are a people person. You are very compassionate. Know who you are. So let's go ahead and dive into how to bring along this stress finesse. Now that we've got the fundamentals down, which are very basic, those take lifetime mastery. The more you work on being the best version of yourself, the harder it is for other people or yourself to stress you out. So let's talk about attitude. Now, I know not many of us wake up to a clock that looks like this anymore. Usually it's our phone or something else. But if you do wake up to an alarm clock, or I like to call an opportunity clock, you usually hear one of two voices in your head. And by the way, if you don't think you have a voice in your head, it's the voice that just said, what voice? I don't hear a voice, okay? We all have a voice in our head, and it's gonna sound something like this. Number one, e e e, alarm's going off. Oh, snooze button, right? Oh, another day, oh, I gotta crawl out of bed. Or it could sound something like this. E, e, e. I love waking up in the morning. I clap my hands and say, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> okay, which voice do you hear? Now, to be totally transparent, I think we are a combination of both voices at times, but if we can be right there in the middle, if we make the decision, today I am going to have a phenomenal attitude. Today I am going to go through work stress-free. We're gonna give ourselves a thumbs up or a thumbs down. And yes, it does start with that first decision in the morning. So once we've made that decision, we've showered, we're dressed, we're back at work, here we go. Guess what? There are unknown conditions ahead. There are going to be circumstances that will 100% come our way. And we're not gonna see them coming most of the time, but you know what? At that point, we have a choice. Are we gonna stray? Are we gonna stay or stray from this stress finesse concept? Let me ask you a question. Would you ever, ever, ever let somebody control your wardrobe? Right? My guess is you'd probably say absolutely not. You would not let somebody control how you dress or what outfit you must wear during the day. Unless it's at work and you're required to wear a uniform that's different. I'm talking a non-work day, would you ever let somebody control what you wear? I highly doubt it. Next one, would you ever let somebody control your hairstyle? You have to wear your hair like this, okay? Unless you're in the military or at a job that requires it, my guess is you'd probably say again, uh, no, I would not let somebody control how I wear my hair. Well, if we know we wouldn't let somebody control our wardrobe, and we know we wouldn't let somebody control what kind of hairstyle we have. Why is it that we allow others to control our emotional state? Big one. When people make you mad, when you say to yourself, you really make me mad, we are giving up 100% control and allowing somebody else to dictate our emotional state. Be strong on that because no one is allowed to control your mind but you. No one is allowed to control your joy but you. 
you know, when I wrote that book, Elevate, that was based on 25 years of research on the personal development industry. And it really comes down to this. Out of all the books I read, it really comes down to this. Turn expectation into appreciation. That's really what it's all about. The next time you feel that little stimulus and you feel that little anger, worry, anxiety, whatever it is for you that starts to come up that we call stress, whatever happens there, take a step back and turn it into appreciation. Going back to our car traffic example, you're backed up in traffic, you're gonna be late to work, we have the choice, right? We can go along our normal routine and get the same results in our life, or we can start to think differently and get different results in our life. For example, you're sitting in your car and you might think to yourself, you know, I sure am happy to be one of the 5% of human beings born in America where I'm able to drive in my own car, right? I'm not, I'm not, uh, I don't have a couple ox traveling behind me and I don't have my shovel trying to make a dirt road so I can get through to get some water. You know, I sure am appreciative that I can push this little button on my car and listen to music that makes me feel really good. You know, I sure am appreciative that these artists who created this music spent hours and hours and hours, I mean years, developing this song to such perfection that it gives me joy. Look, it sounds simple. Most personal development is. Stress finesse is simple. I'm not gonna say it's easy because we have to make the choice to do it, but it is simple. And if you've heard this before, I want to ask you, are you taking action on it? That's the key. Moving into personal leadership. Typically, when somebody has a high-stress lifestyle, it's coming from one of three areas. Number one, their health. Number two, their wealth slash career. And number three, their relationships. Which one is it for you? If you had to look at each of those circles and say, you know what, this is Uh oh, hold on. Probably Dr. Lazo. The area of life that's giving is this. I'm here. Oh, good. <laughs> You're cutting out for a second. So if you don't mind just repeating um, when you began oh, on sure. this section, that'd be great. Sure. Okay, I'm going to jump into the personal leadership again. A little technical difficulties, nothing to stress out about. Plenty of time. Okay, we've got health, wealth, and relationships. When it comes to health, we talked about that. If we don't have our health, it's gonna be a source of stress. When it comes to our wealth slash career slash finances, that can be a monstrous area of stress for many people. When it comes to relationships, this is one of the biggest causes of stress as well. So which one is it for you? If you take a look at the health, wealth, and relationship, which area of life is causing you the most pain? Which area of life is giving you the most stress? What is the cause? And here's what I'm gonna ask you to do. Go ahead and pick the circle that you know is causing you the most stress. And on a scale of one to 10, zero being, uh, yes, major stress, 10 being, no, not at all, I'm pretty darn good in this area, Rate each of those and pick the one that's the lowest. When you have that one, I want you to ask yourself, what are one to two things that I can do right after this call that I can do today to bump this level up just one or two points? And you all know what to do. You all know how to better your health. You all know how to better your finances. You all know how to better your relationships. If you don't, I invite you to read my book. I go into that or ask an expert, okay? We can have it all. You can have great health. You can have more money at the end of the month than bills. And you can have a relationship that is a level 10. Which one is it for you? Health, wealth, or relationships? Okay. Here's one that's a lot of fun to do with coworkers, and I call this the instant happiness celebration. You wanna take stress finesse to a whole new level, this is how you do it, okay? Now, first thing you do when you're in a funk, right? Things aren't just going well, 
You didn't wake up to the right voice in your head. You hit the snooze button. A coworker was short with you. Man, you've got yourself in a tunnel here. And it is time to get yourself out. You know, you need a life jacket, please. Well, this is it. And it's called the Instant Happiness Celebration. Number one, turn on some music, right? Open up your Pandora, Pandora or your Spotify and get a song that makes you feel good. Just listen to it. Start the transform. It takes about two minutes. Take three deep breaths. Get yourself centered again. You can do this in your chair. Just start to move a little bit. You don't have to be a dance expert, right? You just want to go back and forth, start to sway, get the physical response going in your body that will make more of an impact on this mental process. Next thing you do is smile as big as you can. Now, I'm not talking about a cheesy smile, right? We're talking about a big cheesy smile, as big as you possibly can. You cannot think you can smile any more than you possibly can. I'm talking big, big, big smile. When you're finished with that, sorry, bump me over here a little bit. When you're finished with that big smile, you want to take both of your arms and put them up into the sky. You got the music going. You've taken your three deep breaths. You're moving back and forth in your chair. You got this big cheesy smile. Arms are up to the sky and you look straight up to the sky. It is impossible to stay in a bad mood if you just go through those first five steps. Once you're looking up towards the sky with that big cheesy smile, your coworkers think you're absolutely nuts. You start thinking to yourself everything you're grateful for, everything you appreciate in your life. You start thinking about things coming up in the future that you're super excited about. You start to affirm to yourself, today is a day filled with love, opportunity, and potential. It works. It's called an instant happiness celebration. And before you poo-poo it, I ask you to try it. It works well. Now, this isn't going to help the source, right? This is just a temporary fix to get you back to that thought process. I challenge you to do it. It's a lot of fun, and you will laugh while you do it. Another thing you can do to take a more proactive approach to stress is to make a list of the people, places, things, and experiences that you really enjoy. When you focus your life on this and make it part of your schedule, you have less time to get swooped in to other people's drama, right? You have less time to experience all this stress because you become the charger of your own life. Last thing I'm going to share is the six human needs. This comes from Robin's psychology. And once we have the basic survival skills down, once we have food, water, shelter, uh, what is it? Food, water, shelter, fire, right? Once we have that, you know, we get our life going, we're surviving. Well, this is the six human needs for fulfillment, and it comes down to this. Number one, certainty. Are there any unfinished projects or decisions that need to be addressed in your life? You'll know you need more certainty when you become very slow in your response towards others, right? When you have a lot of lag time, when your mind isn't thinking as short, as sharp as it should be. When that happens, get out a piece of paper and write down all of the unfinished projects, all of the maybes, all of the decisions you quite haven't tackled yet, and you'll be amazed. You'll come up with 15 to 20 things that are taking up free rent in your mind. You got to get certain with those. It brings you back to emotional joy because when we're uncertain, we know what that leads to, right? It's just fear about something that we're calling stress. What are you uncertain about in regards to your health, wealth, relationships? Another word for certainty is competence, control. Have you ever been in a job where you don't have any control over your position? That's total uncertainty, which is a total stress producer. Next one is variety. When was the last time you did something for the first time? Do you schedule those new people, places, things, and experiences into your life? Where are you getting variety in your life? It could be something as simple as going out with different friends for lunch. It could be something as simple as taking a different route to work. Schedule variety. It's simple but not easy to do. Do it. Next one is connection. The human experience is meant to be shared with others. 
Have you noticed that your attitude and energy become like those you spend most of your time with? Very, very real. Look, there are some friends that you feel better about yourself when you're around. There are some acquaintances, some friends that you just want to be hanging out with more. There's others, not so much, and you want to limit your associateship with them, right? It's up to you if you want to cast them out of your life or not. But I would say draw more energy towards the people that make you feel good about yourself. Did you know that studies show that your average income is within $3,000 of the people you spend most of your time with? Very, very interesting. Now, the word for connection is love, inclusion, compassion. Moving on to significance. Look, we all matter, every single one of us. Whether it's your position at your place of employment, what you do matters. Whether it's your position in your family, be validated. Make sure you know you're needed. Make sure you know you are important. Significance is a core value. Because once we have these first four, and you'll probably resonate towards one over the others. Once we have these first four, you're probably going to say, you know, this one I could probably do a little better at. This one I kind of perked up and said, hmm, I do need a little more of that in my life. Which one was it for you? Was it certainty? Was it variety? Was it connection? Or was it significance? Once you get those needs met, you're able to graduate to these last two. This one is growth. One of the purposes of life is to live up to our potential. Don't you feel most alive when you're actively getting better at something? It could be your career. It could be parenting. It could be your relationship. It could be your body. It could be anything. It could be a sport. It could be anything that you are driving yourself to grow toward. It's called challenge. We need that in our life. Last one is contribution. Look, are you part of something bigger than yourself? When it comes to outside your place of employment or inside your place of employment, are you locked into the mission and the purpose that's happening there? Look, to live is to give. That truly is a key to fulfillment. People who give, either financially or with their time or with giving somebody a hug, they're happier and they're less stressed. Remember, we're creating stress ful fulfillment, not management. We're creating stress finesse. So find that area of your life that you enjoy and give your gifts and talents there. You know, when we do our live events uh, at corporations, we talk about who is having a really hard time right now. And we have that person stand up and come up to the front of the room and all the coworkers there, I say on the count of three, you're going to shout encouraging, loving statements into this person. And it's, it's amazing. That person stands up in front of the room and everyone's shouting, you can do it. Surely great job. Hang in there. Life's going to get better. Usually the person starts crying. We give them a little gift to put a smile on their face and they have a seat back down. That's a phenomenal experience. However, the real lesson comes when I ask everybody in the audience, you guys just gave. You gave love to this person. You gave encouragement. How do you feel right now? And that's the lesson. Everybody in that room feels encouraged. They feel loved. They feel amazing. All right, we are going to wrap up the summary of stress finesse, tackle that stress monkey. Number one, Get back to the fundamentals. Practice love. Practice integrity, forgiveness, acceptance, and know yourself. Number two, attitude and state management. Start your morning off right and don't let other people, most of the time, we are human beings, don't let other people dictate how you feel. Third one is personal leadership. Make sure those three big areas of your life, health, wealth, and relationship, if one of those are going wrong, it affects your entire life. Those are the biggies. Dig into that one and do what you can do to make it right. Next one was the happiness celebration. That's when you turn on the music, take those deep breaths in, start to move a little bit, get that big cheesy smile, put your arms out wide, look up to the sky, 
Think about what you're grateful for. Think about some things you're excited about and say to yourself, today is a day filled with love, opportunity, and potential. Schedule happiness into your life. Schedule the people, places, things, and experiences that you enjoy and practice those six human needs. Get back to certainty. Get back to variety. Get back to significance. Get back to connection. Once you have those, move on to contribution. Move on to growth. This concludes my portion. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you had as much fun as I did. Great. Thank you so much, Dr. Laszlo. That was a wonderful presentation with some really great takeaways. Thank you, everybody, again, for jumping on and joining us for the webinar today. If you have questions, we have a few minutes. You can go ahead and type them into the chat box or anything you want to know. Um, as a reminder, for those of you who may have jumped on after we went through the housekeeping items, this webinar is being recorded, and you will receive a follow-up email with the link so that you can share it with your friends or watch it again if you'd like to. And I'll make sure to include Dr. Laszlo's contact information if you want to get a hold of him or ask him further questions. Huh. Just wait a few minutes and let people type in their questions if they have them. Somebody, somebody raised their hand. Um, you should have two options for typing in a question. There's a question box and then the chat box at the bottom. So if you just want to type your question in there, I will be sure to relay it to Dr. Laszlo and get it answered. Dr. Laszlo, while we're waiting for some people to type in their questions here, um, do you want to share with us what are some things that you schedule in for fun? Uh, any exciting places or activities that you like to do? Absolutely, yes. Uh, you know, that's a, that's a powerful one. That was a, a powerful slide because when it comes to people, places, things, and experiences, I've made lists. And um, a few years ago, you had asked me, you know, who do you like to hang out with? I'm like, I don't, I don't know. What kind of things do you like to, to buy? I don't really know. What kind of experiences do you like to have? Uh, where, where, where do you like to go? And I didn't really have a very certain answer on that. And I made this list out and made a list of several things. And I tell you what really, really gives me variety and helps a lot of needs is, is travel. Uh, I love to travel. In the past year, my wife and, and kids and I have traveled quite a bit. Uh, we started out in Barcelona. First time I'd been to Spain, absolutely loved that. We went up to Toronto, uh, saw the, the bears up there. That was uh, super exciting. Went to the zoo. Uh, that was a really good experience for my family. Uh, we just got back from a Disney cruise where we went and saw the glaciers in Alaska. Oh, wow. And that was absolutely phenomenal. We went to Jamaica for the weekend. Um, it's pretty crazy the travel that we went through, but this is something we really committed to saying we really enjoy this. These are experiences and places we love to go. And most recently, we just got back from a camping trip. I took my boys up and uh, that was super fun as well. So as far as ex experiences, I would definitely say travel. As far as places, I love to go to nice new restaurants, something I do for a variety in my life. Enjoy that very much. And uh, people, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm 43 years old, been married for six, seven, no, 16 years uh, with my two boys. I tell you, um, it's hard to get a really strong uh, uh, social life, right? When I have all that going on with my businesses and, and along with maintaining my family in my areas. So I just made a list of two people that were some of my best friends that I really wanted to connect with the most. So I make sure I make it a point to get with them at least once a quarter so I can keep that going as well. And as far as things, I'm not, I'm not really a, a thing person. You know, I like to spend money on experiences and, and I, mean, I have nice things, but don't never really been one of those that they make me really happy. Cause every time I've done that, like gone out and bought a really nice car, for example, it wears off in about 
six weeks. <laughs> so then, then I'm stuck with the car payment. <laughs> so, so for me, it's about the experiences, taking the pictures and, you know, taking, taking life on elevated. <laughs> That's great. Thank you for sharing. I think one thing yeah. that I love about living in this beautiful state is that you don't have to go far to go on an adventure, experience new things. There are a lot of places to go that are within driving distance um, for travel and things like that. So I love, I love to just explore where we live. Uh, Absolutely. One question I had is that came up is for people that are resistant to change or change itself is very stressful. You talked about having that variety and, and building change into your life. How do you help those people and direct them with their stress finesse? Well, give them a copy of this webinar. Like, <laughs> honestly, I mean, this certainly helps, but the, the trick of that question is, you know, one, as long as it's not stressing you out, which I know is pretty lofty aspiration there, but when somebody is not willing to change, I wish I had a magic pill for you to give them. Uh, they just don't have enough leverage. So typically, if someone's not willing to make a change in their relationship, in their health life, in their finances, it's because they don't have enough pain associated to it. They're just they're in a state where it's called mediocrity. And and the hard thing about mediocrity is is we stay there. The 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 myth is we stay there, but the reality is entropy comes in and things always start to go down from there so if we're not growing we're dying and if somebody does not want to change we need to find out what is most important to them in their life and once we find out what is most important to them we need to link what they want to change to that activity that's most important to them for example let's say you have a a, a child that doesn't really care about school you know they're not doing too good in school but they really want a Lamborghini, okay? Well, pretty good way to do that is to say, hey, what do you want? I want a Lamborghini. Okay, well, if you want a Lamborghini, do you think people with Lamborghini got good grades? They were very smart business people. Do you think they, were, they acquired some of those skills? And that can start to make those connections. That's one example I can have. And that way they say, okay, wait a minute. If I put more effort into this area that I'm resistant to change in, it will affect this other area of my life. But that's a tricky one. And if you can figure out what they want a lot, you can really figure out what they want. You can usually link it to the actions they need to do better at and where they're willing to change. Great. Thank you. Another question that came in that was probably triggered with your experience on nutrition and diving into that area, not so much on stress, but um, – you know, obviously drinking water is very beneficial, but there are a lot of people saying new things about the benefits of having water that has a higher pH and staying away from just standard bottled water. Um, so what do you have anything to share? Or have you heard much about the effects of water and overall well-being and kind of helping to figure out <laughs> what all of this is that's being talked about right now? Sure. Well, I've got a little bit of insight on that. I wouldn't say a ton, but I will give a little bit. Um, you want your body to, to be perfectly balanced between alkalinity and acidity. So if the pH of that water is not basic, if it is a more alkaline, if it is a little more acidic, based on your entire system, if you're consuming massive amounts of water that are a little more acidic, for example, that'll cause your body to be more acidic. But the basic balance is right there in the middle. Uh, pH of 7.5 and I don't I haven't heard a whole lot going on about bottled water being more on one side versus the other um, I have heard the debate of course about you know we were taught in the 1950s drink eight glasses of water a day drink your 64 ounces and then I've heard actually you should drink half your body in ounces of weight so however, however much you weigh drink at least that much water a day and I think it really comes down to how often your system is is going to the bathroom right if you're drinking those eight glasses a day or half your body weight and you're literally urinating every 30 minutes that's not the right formula for you you know you want to drink just enough water to where you're not urinating you're, you're, you're urinating a few times a day versus every single hour that's really the best physical non-scientific gauge i would have on that great thank you 
Well, I know that everybody took the time out of their day today to join us, and our time, our hour is over, so I'll let everybody get back to work, but I just wanted to thank you all again for joining us for the talk, and thank you, Dr. Laszlo, for taking your time and presenting to us and giving us some great information to take back. Again, if you have any questions or need anything, feel free to respond to the email that goes out after this webinar. Have a great day, everybody. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you, everybody.